Hello and welcome, I'm your code monkey, and yesterday Unity finally announced some proper AI tools. The secret to life is to find something you love to do and do it every day. A few months ago, all they showed was just a vague teaser, but now we have info on actual proper tools. One is called Muse and one is called Synthes. And beyond that, there's also a new category on the Asset Store. With all these AI tools, there are obviously questions about copyright and what datasets they are using. The answer is actually pretty vague right now. I found a bunch of conflicting responses. I'll mention what I found in my research in a little bit. But first, let's look at the tools, what they are. Starting with Unity Muse, which is the AI tool to assist you during the creation process. This one has two parts, text and sketches. Now on the text part, one interesting thing that they mentioned in the blog post is how it uses AI to search through the documentation, training resources, and support content. It does all that in order to get you structured, accurate, and up-to-date information from Unity. Now, I find this part extremely interesting since one big problem with tools like ChatGPT is hallucinations, which is how it confidently gives you an answer even if it's wrong. So I'm definitely very curious about this focus on supposedly accurate results, including working code samples. Like I mentioned in my ChatGPT video, I would not use it to generate code, only for brainstorming design questions, which is exactly how I've been using ChatGPT in my own game, Dinky Guardians. But who knows, perhaps the code that this produces is so good that I will start using it. Honestly, I really doubt it, but I'm very curious to test this claim. We can pause the video to see the answer to the question, how do I make a match 3 game? First, it clearly shows that it knows what is a match 3 game, so that's a good start. I wonder what would happen if you asked it a more obscure genre. Then it says, first you need a game board and suggests Unity's tile map system, which, yep, is a good option. Importantly, here is the one, which refers to the extra links on the bottom. This is really good, so people can learn more detail about certain topics. Next, it suggests using physics. Now, personally, I wouldn't really use physics on a match 3 game, but it's definitely a valid option. It correctly tells you to use the 2D physics system with 2D components, again, with an extra link for extra information. Then, for step 3, it actually goes quite vague. It says you need to implement the core mechanics of a match 3 game, so you need to make the scripts to handle the matching, clearing, and scoring. Then you need to spawn new pieces and move current pieces to fill the gaps. I actually did a match 3 game from scratch quite a while ago, and yep, I did have to do all of this. But I do find it a bit odd how the answer is so vague. Honestly, this feels like that one meme about how to draw an owl. How you first draw two circles, and then you draw the rest of the owl. But one key thing about tools like ChatGPT is being able to ask follow-up questions. So I do wonder how detailed they would go if you asked for more detail on this third point. Then it also makes some nice suggestions based on existing Unity tools to add things like mailboxes, cloud save, and authentication. This is actually a great thing because a lot of people might not know about tons of tools that Unity has. I made my entire Unity overview course directly to answer this question, so this is a great thing. So all in all, this is a pretty decent overview of what is a match 3 and how you could build one. Although, again, I wonder if this would be enough info for a complete beginner. I guess the answer really comes down to how much detail it would give you if you ask for further clarification on that third point. Then we can see the demo, it asks another question with some more detail on how to create a sprite and rotate it. So you import an image, then it tells you the difference between having the editor set up in 2D or 3D, which is actually a pretty important thing. This is something that can trip a beginner, so this is really great. Then it gives some very beginner-friendly instructions, once again alongside some helpful links, and finally it gives a super simple script. So this part, this text-based tool, this doesn't really seem anything too impressive, but it's also not necessarily unimpressive, it's really just like many other tools that already exist. Now, much more interesting to me are the other parts of this tool. How you can just use text to generate animations, like for example do a backflip. Personally, I have no skills as an animator, so this would be extremely useful to me. I always hate having to look at the asset store to find all kinds of animation packs to try to figure out which one contains whatever specific animation I'm looking for. So if I could just type some text and get a quick draft animation, that would be wonderful. One thing that I do hope this tool has is refinement, meaning ask a question and then being able to ask follow-ups. That is something that I dislike in tools, kind of like Dali, where everything must be generated from just one prompt and you can't really ask follow-up questions like you can with ChatGPT. So I really hope this tool allows for doing that. Like, for example, do a backflip, okay, now do it a bit more intense, now jump a bit higher and so on, I think that would be great. Another use case is sprite texture generation, but also extra interesting is how you can draw sketches. So you don't have to generate the entire image with just one prompt, you draw to select the areas you want to generate, and then you give the prompt. Lately, I've been using the Photoshop AI beta, which has exactly this feature, and I have found that extremely useful. I find this workflow much better than having to generate the entire image with just one prompt, this is great for creating tons of variation, where you can just select one part of the image and easily create tons of variation for that. Although, of course, you can also generate entire things like entire textures. 
And looking at the demo, the generated materials do seem to work quite well at scale, with no visible seams or repetition. Now the terrain doesn't look pretty basic. Some people on Twitter were pointing out how this terrain really looks like a game from the early 2000s. But again, keep in mind this is just one material. If you were to mix multiple materials generated by this, and you add a bunch of props, then I think this terrain would look quite good. So this full material generation also seems pretty interesting. Now on the blog post, they also mention how this tool will help you both in the editor and on the web. So it sounds like that means there will be some kind of website that you can access the tool, but then it will also be accessible directly from inside the editor, so that's great. All in all, from this tool, Unity Muse, I don't see much use for the generic text-based AI, but the other use cases do seem extremely useful. I would love to be able to easily generate some animations with text and generate some random iterations of different sprites for my games, so I definitely can't wait to try this out and explore all of its limitations. Now the next tool, this one is called Unity Synthesis, and this is how you can embed an AI model in the Unity runtime, which will run on every platform that Unity supports. So that includes mobile, PC, web, consoles, and so on. What this means is really that there's no cloud hosting or no server connection needed at all. Once your model is trained, it just runs locally on the player machines. So after you train it, there are no costs to you as a developer. And of course, with this being local, it also helps with latency, which is usually a big problem with things like using AI to generate some NPC response. The demo showcases someone talking to a character that is being driven by AI. What hairstyles would you choose if you had hair? If I had hair, I would probably go for a messy bun or ponytail. I like how they look on other people and I think they're easy to maintain. Now they don't specify exactly how AI is used. I assume they are using AI for the initial speech to text recognition, then probably using it for text to voice generation and perhaps even for the mouth animation. However, while the selling point on this is being local on device with no latency, the video doesn't necessarily show that. There are cuts before every response. I have no idea if they cut just because it took a bit too long to reply or really just make the video more interesting with some zooms. And also on this specific demo, on this specific use case, personally, this is something that I really have no interest in. A while ago, Nvidia announced another similar tool where, again, you could chat with a random NPC, you could ask it whatever you want, and again, my reaction to that was exactly the same. Personally, I have never once played the game where I thought to myself, oh, I wish I could talk to this random NPC for hours on end about anything. That's really just something I have never had a desire to do in any game. I just want to talk to the NPC, get the information that whatever designer came up with, and then go ahead and keep doing some gameplay. But then again, that's just because, personally, I prefer some more mechanically focused games as opposed to things that are very story based. So I could see that for a player who enjoys something like adventure point and click games, for that, I can see how it could be a selling point to be able to talk to every NPC for as long as you want. Now suddenly there's not much more detail on this tool. The idea of having an inference engine running on device is potentially quite interesting. But my bigger question is, how exactly are you training the AI model? So how much data does it need? How do you actually train it? Is it just by using the regular Unity ML Agents package? Is Synthes really just a rebranding or a new name for what they've had for a long time, which was Barracuda? It's been a long time since I touched ML Agents, definitely want to get back to it at some point. Hopefully there will be some more details on the specifics of how this tool works. And then there's also an update for the Assessor. Now there is a specific category for verified AI solutions, and there's already quite a lot of them. Honestly, by now there are hundreds of AI tools all over the place. I try to keep up with the pace of AI, but there's just way too much stuff. Here you've got some 3D asset generators, some NPC AI dialogue and behavior. There's some image generation, voice generation, liquids, and even testing. So lots of stuff, and if you want to try it out, most of these tools are free to test. And by the way, there's even more tools. These up top are just the highlights that are actually verified. But there's a bunch more that claim to use AI to do all kinds of things, like music generation, integration with machine learning, and a bunch more. So if you're interested, go browse the SSR and see this category. Now for a pretty big question, what datasets were these tools trained on and what about issues with copyright? Suddenly I cannot find a definitive answer. When I spoke with the Unity AI team behind closed doors back at the GDC, back then they told me it was extremely important for them to actually own the datasets, which is excellent. However, over here when people ask for what datasets are you using, the answer is extremely vague. They just say they licensed a large language model and fed it some Unity docs. So it sounds like they used something like ChatGPT and then fine-tuned it with Unity knowledge. But this part, this really says absolutely nothing about the art generation tools. However, someone asked this question on Twitter and Sylvia replied, who is the SVP of innovation at Unity. And here it says it's their own dataset called Runa. I literally cannot find any mention of anything called Runa outside of this tweet, so no idea what that refers to. 
Is that an art asset or animation? No idea. Another interesting tweet is by Natalia, who works at Graphics at Weta, which is part of Unity. And again, this says, in relation to this weird alien creature, how it was built on custom data which was ethically sourced. And again, my question is, what data does that refer to? Is it the mouth movements? Is it the backflip animation that we saw? Is it the voice generation? Really no idea. Personally, I think it is extremely important to be very clear about where the datasets came from and that there are no copyright issues. I think that is absolutely essential before any serious devs will risk using these tools in their commercial games. So I really hope they clear up all this confusion and give a clear answer about each type of AI generation and which specific datasets they were trained on. Alright, so that's the latest on Unity AI tools. If you're interested, they are part of their AI beta program, which you can go sign up to gain access for the upcoming closed beta. Personally, I already signed up months ago when they first showed the teaser. If I get access to the beta, I'll definitely try them out, so stay tuned. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching.